As a grocery chain is dismantled, investors recover their money. Worker pensions are short millions. Come on. Come on. Let's break it on down. Munis or Munchie, Muncie, Indiana. Once the Marsh supermarkets began to falter a few years ago, its owner, a private equity firm, began selling off the vast retail empire, piece by piece. The company sold more than 100 convenience stores. It sold the pharmacies. It closed some of the 115 grocery stores, having previously auctioned off their real estate. Then in May 2017, the company announced the closure of the remaining 44 stores. Marsh Supermarkets, founded in 1931, had at last filed for bankruptcy. It was a long, slow decline, said Amy Gherkin, formerly an assistant office manager at one of the stores, Sun Capital Partners, the private equity firm that owned Marsh, didn't really know how grocery stores work. We joke about them being on a yacht without even knowing what a UPC code is. But they didn't treat employees right. And since the bankruptcy, everyone is out for their blood. The anger arises because although the sell-off allows Sun Capital and its investors to recover their money and then some, the company entered bankruptcy, leaving unpaid more than $80 million in debts to workers, severances, and pensions. For Sun Capital, this process of buying companies, seeking profits, and leaving pensions unpaid is a familiar one. Over the past 10 years, it has taken five companies into bankruptcy while leaving behind debts of about $280 million owed to employee pensions. The unpaid pensions debt means that retirees will get smaller checks. Much of the tab will be picked up by the government's pension insurer a federal agency facing its own budget shortfalls. They did everyone dirty, said Kirby Baker, 70, a retired warehouse worker whose pension check was cut by 25% after Marsh Supermarkets withdrew from the pension. We all gave up wage increases so we could have a better pension. Then they just took it away from us. Founded by one-time colleagues at Lehman Brothers, Mark Leder and Roger R. Krauss Sun Capital manages billions in private equity investments, buying and selling companies for profit. The public face of the firm is Letter, a co-owner of the Philadelphia 76ers basketball team and the New Jersey's Devil hockey team. Noted for his extravagant parties and yachting expeditions, he has been dubbed by the tabloids the Hugh Hefners of the Hamptons. Politically, he may be best known for hosting the Baccaratan, Florida dinner, where presidential candidate Mitt, Mitt, Mitt Romney made what became infamous comments about 47% of people who are dependent upon the government, who believe that they are who believe that they are victims. In a statement for this report, Sun Capital said Marsh was a struggling business that we worked to save. Our investors kept the company alive and provided jobs for its employees for 11 years. Over that period, the company invested $150 million in improving some stores and building others, Sun said, and contributed $30 million to pensions for Marsh workers. Despite these efforts and in the facing declining revenues and massive spending by national competitors, Marsh was unfortunately first to declare bankruptcy and we lost, our, and we lost money on our investment, the statement said. Regarding the unpaid pensions at the other companies, Leader said in a statement, you can't reach a meaningful conclusion by examining such a small percentage of our investments. We've done 365 deals in our history, and the vast majority have grown and been successful. When a company fails, it is sometimes impossible to pay everyone who was owed money. The trouble, according to some critics, is that financial firms often extract money from losing bets to reward themselves and then, through bankruptcy, leave obligations to workers unpaid. Companies own by private equity firms have used bankruptcy to leave hundred to leave behind hundreds of millions of dollars in pension debts, according to a government estimate. Probably more like billions. These private equity firms buy a company, plunder it of any assets, and then send it into and then send it and then send it into bankruptcy without paying employees, said Eileen Applebaum. An economist at the Center for Economic and Policy Research who studies private equity transactions. 
to anyone but a bankruptcy court, this looks like a swindle. In, in recent years, some in, some in Congress have sought to change the bankruptcy laws to prevent companies from ditching, from ditching pensions through bankruptcy. Last year, Rep. Tim Ryan, the uh, Democrat of Ohio, introduced a bill that would give pensions higher priority in bankruptcy payouts. He said that in 2016 alone, 146,000 pensioners overall had seen cuts of their benefits. It did not win passage. There's this idea that pensions are a giveaway, said Ryan, who expects to reintroduce the legislation in 2019. But it's their money. Through negotiations, workers have deferred wages for a pension down the line. For them not to get that money is theft. In a lot of ways, the workers are a pawn in the game. Promises made, not kept. Since the 1960s, the United States has grappled with how to prevent companies from reneging on the payment of employee pensions. You should keep the promises you make to workers. President George W. Bush said in, the signing, in signing the last major U.S. effort in pensions reform, the Pension Act in 2006, 2006, if you offer a private pension plan to your employees, you have the duty to set aside enough money now so your workers will get whatever you have promised when they retire. But the threats of pensions, but the threats to pensions continue. At the heart of federal efforts to protect workers is a low-profile government agency known as Pension Benefit Guarantee Corps, or the PBGC. The agency collects insurance premiums from companies that offer pensions. When a pension fund is out of money, the federal agency provides a portion of the lost benefit payments to the affected retirees. And all, it covers the benefits for about 44 million people. The program has come under mounting financial pressures as more companies have shed their pension debts through bankruptcy. For example, the part of the government's pension insurer that backs up benefits for many unionized workers is projected to run out of money by 2025, leaving it unable to protect pensioners, many of whom are facing a wave of trouble. The private sector pensions funds covering more than 1 million unionized workers are expected to run out of money within the next 20 years according to the government estimates. In the view of Joshua Gottbaum, the former director of the PBGC and a former partner in a private equity firm, much of the blame lies with the financial firms that buy and sell companies for profit. What we've seen is the financial firms essentially take the money and run, leaving their employees and the PBGC holding the bag, said Gottbaum, who was appointed to head the agency by President Barack Obama in 2010. According to a 2013 tally by Gottbaum, companies controlled by a private equity companies controlled by private equity firms have used bankruptcy to shed more than 650 million of pension obligations. That leaves the that leaves the government's pension insurer or employees to pick up the tab. Since bankruptcy's laws changed in 1978, Gottbaum said, the business community has been inventing new uses of the bankruptcy courts. The private equity community realized they could use Chapter 11 to do, pen to do pension laundering. Shetty de shedding debts, buying again. <laughs> As a public relations matter, companies that default on their pension obligations often blame business conditions. Executives say that the company simply lacked the money to replenish the pension fund. But it is often the case that companies neglect the pension even when they have the money. The owners would rather use the cash for their purposes, including taking it as dividends for themselves. Consider four Sun Capital companies, besides Marsh, that were sent into bankruptcy court. At two of them, Sun Capital took millions of dollars out of the companies while leaving pensions underfunded. At PowerMate, a manufacturer of electric generators, which is a factory in Nebraska, Sun Capital took $20 million from the, from the company as a dividend in 2006, according to court documents. Two years later, it sent the company into bankruptcy, leaving the government insurer to pay for the underfunded pension, covering 600 workers. At Indelex, an Illinois-based aluminum parts maker, Sun extracted a dividend of, seven, of $70 million in 2007, according to court documents. Two years later, it sent the company into bankruptcy, leaving the government insurer to pay more than 3,000 pensioners. At the two other companies, Friendly, 
friendlies in 2011 and fluid and fluid routing solutions in 2009 sun capital used the bankruptcy court to shed the pensions obligations and then kept operating first sun puts each, put each company in bankrupt essentially relinquishing control in in bankruptcy court the companies were absolved of their pensions debts of 115 million and 30 million respectively that once the companies were pension free sun capital bought the same companies out of the ensuing bankruptcy auction they used bankruptcy to get rid of pension obligations they didn't want all while retaining ownership got bomb said in response to questions about whether sun had treated the pensions fairly the private equity firm noted that the pensions debts at those companies had occurred before sun became involved each of those five companies, Marsh, PowerMate, Indelex, Friendlies, and Fluid Routing Solutions, had significant pension debts when it acquired them. Indeed, when Sun bought those companies, they were about $90 million behind on pension payments. By the time those Sun companies filed for bankruptcy and the government insurer picked up the pension obligations, However, the pension debts were estimated at $280 million. In part, the pension bills went up because the recession caused pension fund losses. Most of that $280 million debt, however, was shed through bankruptcy courts. Sun also noted that these five, company, that these five companies represent only a small sample of its investment portfolio. During the period when these five companies filed for bankruptcy with the underfunded pensions, Sun had investments in more than 80 companies. Origins of Marsh Deal The inspirations for Sun Capital, according to letter, arose from a visit to Romney's private equity firm, Bain Capital. In April 1995, Leader and Krauss, then both at Lehman Brothers, had a meeting at Bain Capital in Boston and heard executives complaining about an investment in which they doubled their money. We're looking at each other saying, this is an industry where double your money is not that good of a deal leader recalled in an interview with the new york times the two founded sun capital in the same year they began raising money from investors then buying and selling companies for profit it was in 2006 that sun capital would make a play for marsh supermarkets the chain had been launched by Irma marsh in the early years of the great depression and since then had expanded rapidly operating through various names across Indiana, Illinois, and Ohio. 69 Marsh Markets, 38 Low Bill Food Markets, and 8 Omala Food Markets, and 154 pantry convenience store, uh, Village Pantry Convenience Stores. It, had, uh, it, it also had a catering service, uh, service, pharmacies, and a florist business. But Marsh was also facing fierce competition particularly from Walmart, and it had begun racking up debt, losing money and suffering from corporate, from corporate bloat. Don Marsh, Irma's son, had taken over the company, <clears throat> and among other extravagant, <clears throat> excuse me, and among other extravagancies noted by his detractors, he traveled using a corporate jet, a 1997 Citation Ultra, yet Sun Capital executives were attracted. In their view, the supermarket chain was underperforming. It was basically a good business, and if they revamped the company, they thought there was more money to be made, according to their former executives, who spoke on the condition of, an of anonymity. Moreover, if they failed at resurrecting the company, they could still turn a profit, former executives said. The land and buildings owned by Marsh were appraised at $360 million, according to company financial statements. That meant even if a buyer failed to revive the business, it could make money selling off the stores. Sun Capital acquired Marsh Supermarkets for $325 million, paying $88 million for the business and assuming $237 million for the company's debt. We see tremendous potential in this 75-year franchise and intend to build upon Marsh's significant market share in the communities in which it shares, a Sun Capital executive said in news release at the time. The deal goes awry. By most accounts, Sun's reign at Marsh supermarkets got off to a good start. Under Sun's management, corporate overhead was trimmed, 
the staff at headquarters, which had just had about 500 people, was paired about 30%. Stud executives dropped the company's pricey corporate sponsorships from Indiana Pacers' NBA game. The company's jet had been scrapped. The cost savings in turn provided cash to help remodel older stores. We were rocking and rolling again, said a former Marsh executive who spoke on condition of, of anonymity. We saw a sales bump within the stores with the store's renovations. The profits didn't last. Former Marsh executives cited a variety of reasons for Marsh's subsequent demise. The recession, which continued to, to depress consumer spending, effective excuse me, executive turnover at Marsh, and finally, competition from other larger chains, chains particular Kroger and Myger, which cut into margins. Marsh Supermarkets was on a long, slow road to bankruptcy. But Sun Capital and its investors nonetheless but managed to recover the investment mainly by selling the company off in pieces. One of the first moves they made at Marsh was a sale back, was a sale lease back, and it and it was and it was critical Marsh sold off its real estate portfolio for about two hundred and sixty million, according to Marsh documents. Then leased the stores back from the new owners. There were more sales to come. In twenty thirteen, Marsh sold some of its convenience stores for $48 million, according to a lawsuit filed by the buyer. And in 2015, Marsh collected an additional $40 million with the sale of the rest of the convenience stores, according to the same lawsuit. Some of the money from these sales stayed with, the, stayed with Marsh. Some went back to Sun Capital. When considering whether anyone made money with the Marsh investment, there were two parties to consider. First are the investors who turned over money to Sun Capital to invest in buying and selling companies such as Marsh Supermarkets. These investors got back almost all the money they sent into Marsh, that they sank into Marsh, according to a cash flow statement obtained by the Washington Post. They recovered all but $500,000 of the $51 million invested in buying and renovating the chain. When Sun Capital says the investment lost money, this is what they're referring to. But then there is a Sun Capital partner itself. It did better than merely recovering its investment. An investor in its own fund, it may have shared a small portion of the $500,000 loss, but a private equity firm also collects fees on the portfolio of companies they manage. And these would have more than made up for, this, for that slight loss. Sun Capital collected a $100 million annual management fee from Marsh, according to former executive Sun Capital, who had also collected large commissions for selling off assets as it did with Marsh. But it is not known how much Sun Capital took in such commissions in this case. Sun Capital declined to share the fees in the Marsh deal. Even with the eventual bankruptcy, there is no way Sun's lost money there is no way Sun lost money on that deal, said w, said Douglas W. Dottery, or Dougherty, Dougherty, chief financial uh, officer at Marsh Supermarket until a few months after Sun Capital acquired the company. The value of the real estate, the value of the real estate in the company which they sold, was just too much. Although Sun Capital investors were basically repaid what Marsh pensions debts were not, the company was notified in May 2012, just a few days after the Romney dinner, that it owed $62 million to the pensions for warehouse workers. At the same time, it was behind millions of dollars to the pensions covering store employees. Those debts remained largely unpaid at the time of bankruptcy. Sun thus stripped supermarkets and its affiliates of more than $100 million that should have been used to resolve the pension obligation, alleges the lawsuit filed by GPM Investments, the company that bought the convenience stores and is disputing whether it is liable for any of the pension debt. Through its attorney, GPM Investments declined to comment. Marsh pensions unpaid. When Sun bought Marsh Supermarket, the company had three retirement plans, one for the top five Marsh executives, one for the store employees, one for the warehouse workers. The only executive plan, however, was fully funded under the sales agreement within the completion of Sun's purchase. Marsh's top five executives 
were to be awarded $14 million in retirement payments, according to a company financial document. Among them, CEO Don Marsh at $7 million and corporate counsel P. Lawrence Butt at $2.2 million. Meanwhile, the, uh, the other two retirement plans, the worker pensions, uh, the other two retirement plans, the worker pensions, were short millions of dollars. The pensions for store employees, deli clerk, cashiers, store managers, was underfunded by $32 million at the time of the bankruptcy. Most of that burden will be placed on the government insurer, the Pension Benefit Guaranty Group, or Guaranty Corps. Thank you which will restore virtually all of what the 4,000 store employees entitled to pensions are owed in retirement. The pension covering the company warehouses workers fared worse. At the time of the bankruptcy, Marsh Supermarkets was behind in its obligation to that pension by $55 million. And because of that way, and because of the way that that pension is organized, the shortfall is likely to help, uh, to help cause significant cuts to pension checks for retirees and accelerate financial woes of the government pension insurer. The pension fund for, Marshall work, for Marshall's warehouse worker is part of the Teamsters affiliated fund known as Central States, which covers about 400,000 people. Even before the Marsh bankruptcy, Central States was running out of money, partly because of so many trucking companies had filed for bankruptcy. More than $1.5 billion of the central state's pension shortfall can be traced to bankruptcy by companies owned by private equity firms, according to the pensions fund. It is expected to be insolvent within seven years. Bearing a government intervention, pensioners who worked at Marsh's warehouse, making about $17 an hour, may get very little of the pensions they were expecting. For years, the workers had given up wages increases to get better pensions, they said. Yet, some retirees already have seen cuts among, have seen cuts to the amounts they had been promised. The highest pensions checks run about $2,600 a month, cut from $3,000 a month, according to the retirees. When Sun pulled the Marsh supermarkets out of the central state's pension plan in 2012, Pension benefits dropped out about 23%, pension officials said. But the projected insolvency of the central state pensions would be far worse. Standing not that the Marsh warehouse workers, but thousands of others pensioners who rely on it. They're jacking, they're jacking with people's lives, said Darren Cooper who worked at the warehouse for 26 years until the bankruptcy. When Sun took over, we were all we were all we were kind of all taken aback. You didn't mind working for a place that started up that started up right around here. But then all of a sudden with Sun, we were working for some rich guy from somewhere else who didn't care about you. They don't even know who you are. They're just counting their money. Among those who have seen their benefits drop is Phil Rainey, 70, who worked in the Marsh Warehouse for decades. He began at Marsh's Ice Cream Factory in 1967, a year after graduating from high school. His mother had worked at, had worked at the Marsh Bakery. He was drafted a couple years later, and after an Army tour in Vietnam, Rainey worked the next 42 years at the Marsh Warehouse. Over that time, he got married, bought a house, and raised two daughters. Like others in his union, Rainey was willing to give up wage increases to get a better pension. And as he thought about retirement, he figured his finances would hold thanks to monthly benefit. And just to get his ducks in a row, he also arranged to pay off his house mortgage, his home mortgage. Like many planning, planning retirement, he didn't want to have to worry. Already, though, his monthly benefits payment had been cut about 25% and the promised certainty of a stable monthly pension has been elusive. I've been fighting since I retired to keep the pension, Rainey said, and I think about and I think about it a lot. We don't know what is going to happen. He has received notice saying that the Central States Pension Project is running out of money in 2025, and the government insurance program that would normally have uh, that would normally have ins insured those pensions benefits is is expected to go bust about the same time seems kind of funny 
that those two would run out of money at the same time, Rainey said skeptically. <laughs> but then it's not funny at all. If I lose my pension, what am I going to do? Who's going to hire a 75-year-old man? <sighs> Y'all, I've got two pieces coming. This one and the other one that I, you know, I mean, that's going to come before this. I have been trying to tell y'all for a long time that this shit is coming. It's going to come super vicious. You know, the fall is going to happen way faster than anybody could ever anticipate. Please look for it. I don't have time to elaborate. I'll elaborate in another video. But yeah, this has been epic. Appreciate your time.